All stories start somewhere, and ours starts right here. On an ordinary street, or so it might appear. But at the top of one house, once you've climbed all the stairs, is an attic and a man. And the story he shares. This man is called Arthur, and he lives all alone. In an attic, just him. He likes being on his own. Mm. Uh, how long has he lived here? Well, even he doesn't know. But he knows that it's home, and he keeps it just so. Psst! Arthur's still asleep. <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, he needs to wake up now. Uh. Do you think you can help us wake Arthur up? Yeah. I know. Let's be his alarm oh, clock. Oh, that's a great idea. OK, everybody, on the count of three, we're going to make the noise of Arthur's alarm clock. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Did he just snooze us? OK, we're going to need to do this again. We're going to need to be even louder and go on as long as it takes until we wake him up. Ready? Three, two, one. Zombies, they make him feel small. He grabs the tray with his breakfast on, and that is all. Ooh! With the world shut out, it's back to his tray. What has Arthur got for his breakfast today? I think it's toast. No. Oh. I think it's cereal. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's grapefruit. grapefruit. Once his meals are done, Arthur turns on the news, hoping for a story to delight and amuse. It's disastrous out here. I don't know what to do. There's a terrifying monster. Now back to you. <gasps> That's the sort of thing uh -oh. Arthur cannot abide. That's the reason Arthur stays inside. To distract himself, he puts the radio on. And he dances around to his favourite song. We interrupt this broadcast to bring breaking news. A big bad mouse has escaped from the zoo and it's gone. Thank goodness for his bookshelves. They're all he needs. So picking a good one. He sits down and reads. <laughs> oh. 
and with his day done, you might think the time for bed, but Arthur has quite different plans in his head. And so we see him go to his bedroom window to stare at the moon and to bathe in its glow. For the moon is his companion, always there in the night, always ready to listen and shine down its light. Without the moon up above to share his day with, Arthur suddenly felt lonely. He had nothing to give. Throughout his long life, the moon had always been there. When Arthur was young, his life had been full. Heard the call of the wild and felt nature's pull. It was there when he needed his courage the most. Through battle and war, the moon kept at its post, present whenever he felt at his best. And there for him if he felt down or depressed. He explored all his talents and tried every job. Some were successful and some were really quite odd. On sea or on land, the moon guaranteed would be close at hand. For as life came and went, and each day passed by, Arthur knew he could rely on the moon in the sky. Or at least, that was what he had thought. But now the moon was gone, leaving Arthur distraught. <laughs> Oh, pour a drink. Oh, yes. Play solitaire. Put on a waltz to ease his despair. Well, maybe it will be better tomorrow. But nothing relieves his feeling of sorrow. Until one night, he just couldn't wait anymore. This wasn't the sort of thing he could just ignore. If the moon wasn't here, it must be somewhere. So for help, he turned to the people out there. Arthur came up with a cunning idea. He could send out a message without facing his fear. A balloon, he thought, would be just the thing. Paris. Will you all be spiky rooftops with me? 
me and hold up your hands like this. <laughs> and it dodged the chomping mouths of giraffes in the Sahara. It got low over the waves of the Pacific Ocean. And swung high with the monkeys in the Tongass rainforest. <laughs> What does it say? Have you seen the moon? Have you seen the moon? Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. Do you think we can let Arthur know that it's still out there? We need to send him a message. Who knows how we need to send a message by balloon? Do it. That's it. Everyone take a deep breath. And blow. That's it. Keep going. One more big blow should do it. <gasps> Arthur's heart skipped a beat and he grinned a big grin. For attached to the bottom was a letter and it was for him. Bonjour Arthur. Merci bien pour la belle lettre. Ton petit ballon sur la rue. Oh là là, c'est ça. ça. Pardon. Oh là là. Eh? Anglais ça? English? Oh, tout oui. à l'heure. I, 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 I should translate. Oui. Oui. Tu have the moon here in Paris. Oh. I can see it. My wife, Clotilde, can see it. Bonjour. My daughter, Emily, can see it. Hello. My, 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 my two sons, Jean Paul and Raphael, can see it. Raphael. I have double checked. I have called my parents, Mark and Sophie, oh, Sophie. my brother Antoine, oh, and his six daughters, Marie, Susan, Daria, Emily, Claude, and Emily. They can all see the moon. My whole family, we are looking up at the moon. It is making us smile. Tous ensemble. Oh, I hope you find your moon again, Arthur. Au revoir. Oh. Some foreign tongue reminded old Arthur of when he was young. His rusty memory conjured up forgotten faces, a host of smiling people in far distant places. In India, he remembered where he went in his prime, travelling by plane for the very first time. Passengers, for the 737 flight to India should begin boarding from gate number five. Thank you. <sighs> Important looking men on their business trip. No room there. Was he sat with the stag party? Oh, no. He found an available seat and waited for the plane to take off. Please, can everyone listen up? The safety briefing is about to begin. Now, there are several emergency exits on this aircraft located here, 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 and here. If oxygen levels should fall, mass will drop from the ceiling. Please assist yourselves before assisting anybody else. All unwanted items should be stored in your overhead luggage compartments or underneath your seat. <laughs> Low level emergency light from the right. This room. is your captain speaking. Welcome to flight 737. Prepare for takeoff. <laughs> you have your light on, madam. Anything I can help you with? You're looking a little bit peaky there, sir. Would you like a sick bag? Of course you've got time to go to the toilet. You're not allowed to smoke on the aeroplane. Would you like a hot flannel, sir? Can I get you another whiskey there, sir? Please can everyone return to their seat. That's your seatbelt! We're coming into land! <laughs> Thank you for flying and welcome to India! Well, the first thing that Arthur noticed about India were all of the colours. Exploding bursts of green, purple, blue, red. The smell. Inviting, enticing, exotic. He'd never smelled anything this. Wow, Ooh, that's absolutely disgusting. Monkeys, 
chattering through the treetops. <laughs> Watch out for your belongings. People sat on the floor. Monkeys sat in their chairs. The noise is deafening. Beep, beep. Excuse me. Elephants. Real life elephants. <laughs> so enormous. So gentle. Catch a taxi. Catch a rickshaw. Catch anybody's eye. What the heat! The sun beating down overhead. Beads of sweat dripping through the marketplaces. So much to see. So much to choose. Arthur felt overwhelmed. Arthur felt out of place. Thank goodness everyone he met in India was so friendly. Arthur found himself in the largest marketplace in all of India with the most beautiful things for sale. Dupatas for a thousand rupees. Kurta pajamas, all different colours, shapes and sizes. Oh. And curtains, finest Indian quality, sir. One yellow, one orange. Arthur had never seen so many beautiful things and so many beautiful people. He saw the market store owners give each other a nice friendly wave at the beginning of the day. Then they set about their job of trying to sell their wares to Arthur. They called out to him, Arthur, come and see! Arthur, Arthur come, come and, and see! see. Arthur, Arthur, come and see! Look. Arthur, come and see! 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 Wow. Oh, no! Are no, you going to put them on your head? They're like trousers. And curtains! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, Arthur was overjoyed with all of his new patches and all of his new friends and was especially excited when he received an invitation to join them for a party in the street that night. <laughs> all the market stall owners were there together, singing and dancing in the street. They were all dancing the same dance. They placed their forefinger to their thumb like this, and the same on this hand. They raised this one to the sky and this one to the floor, and rotated their wrists. And then they swapped. And then they swapped. And soon everyone was dancing exactly the same. Except. Oh, no. Arthur found it a little bit harder to learn the dance than everybody else. Luckily, if he wasn't very good at dancing, he might be good at music. wish she had some of his own dance moves to impress her with. Does anyone know any dance moves that we can teach Arthur? Running man. <gasps> Running man! <laughs> yes! What else? Macarena. The Macarena. Woo! <laughs> the floss! A modern classic! <laughs> well, with dance moves like this, Paya couldn't help but be impressed. And so, she took Arthur to visit India's most romantic location, the Taj Mahal. Arthur had never seen anything so magnificent. The still river out front, and the walls of bright white marble, and on top, the huge domed roof. Arthur felt honoured 
And so he told Paya everything that had happened to him in India so far. His journey, his new clothes, his new friends, his new dance moves. And then he introduced her to his closest companion. Arthur, Pyre, and the moon. He stopped a passing tourist and asked him to take a photo of them all together. So he'd have something to remember them by. <laughs> something to remember this feeling and this place and these people forever and ever. And yet, he had forgotten. How? How could he have forgotten about that place? That exciting adventure. Every smiling face. The way that he felt when he held Pia's hand. Now, just memories. Now, just tokens he held in his hand. Now, old Arthur had no one. Not even his moon. And he thought... Well, hang on a second. That wasn't quite true. He did have someone, a friend to turn to. That person that left his meals on a tray. Oh, of course. And then Arthur realised he had something to say. Grateful, yes, but scared. Arthur returned to his chair, and he waited for more balloons to flow through the night air. Who remembers how we sent the balloon back to Arthur? That's it. Deep breath, and blow. Oh, too far. Inhale. Suck it back in. Dear Arthur, thank you for your letter. I spotted it on my morning post round. What a funny way to send a letter. By a balloon. I saw it floating out of your attic window. It looked so calm there, twinkling in the early morning sky. And then whoosh! A huge gust of wind sent it over the rooftops and around the corner. It buffeted between two chimney pots, banging, bashing, crashing. Until it flew into the streets below, past all the shoppers, excuse me. Uh, excuse me, have you got any of the- I got it! But not for long. It flew high above the world out of reach, until the wind dropped. Dropped it into the play park where it slid down slides. Swung up swings. It's an enormous kick. Sent it high over the treetops, crashing down under a bridge. Shh. I couldn't let it go. Shh. Reaching out my fingers. Oh, perfect safety. Whew. What a lot of excitement for one little balloon. I return it to you safe and sound. Love from the postman. Uh. <laughs> Arthur couldn't believe it. Another reply. An exciting adventure that had happened nearby. And something started to stir inside. The long buried memories he could no longer hide. Arthur the Explorer, with his rucksack and his maps, had searched through the rainforest for Venus flytraps. He trekked through the bush and crossed desert sands. He sailed the seas in search of new lands. But what adventure? Remembered clearest of all, up a mountain in Alaska, 10,000 feet tall. Here was his old logbook, which he opened to read. Look, a list written down of things he might need. What might we need if we were going on an adventure? Uh -huh. A hat! Oh, yeah! Uh, a coat? Chocolate. Some chocolate! A hot water bottle! <laughs> A compass. A compass. And of course, Arthur had his journal and he drew his whole journey. Day three. I'm halfway up the mountain and my feet are already ache. Day four. Today I saw a huge sleepy grizzly bear. A
faster. him of when his days weren't all the same. Of a time when his life felt a little bit bigger. When the thought of the world made his heart beat much quicker. He had once stretched the limits of all that he could do, but now he just stayed in his attic with the same street view. How far could he make it on his old little feet? Could he make it as far as the first house on the street? the second, or the third. He could try to be brave and go out there, but once out there he'd be helpless in the wide open air. The thought of it all caused a tightening in his chest. Perhaps he should stay home. Yes, that would be best. Still, the letter had moved him all right. Maybe it wasn't enough to live just by moonlight. Then on the horizon, he spotted something. Another balloon. What would this one bring? This one's travelled really far. It's delicate, so short little puffs to get it to Arthur. What memories would awaken, he thought, starting to read. What far-flung adventure, what heroic deed. Except this one was from a place that he didn't know at all. A letter written in a childlike scrawl. Dear Arthur, thank you for your letter. I found it underneath a pile of wires. My name is Amma, and I'm 11 and 3 quarters. I live in Lalongwe, Malawi, with my grandma. 
I sent you a present as well. Oh. Don't worry, Arthur. I've got the moon. It's right here in front of me as I'm writing my letter. It's shining down on me in my rubbish dump. Yeah. like my friend Wanza. I'm lucky. I get to go to school. I wake up at 6.30 each morning and start my walk to school. Bye, Grandma! It takes about three hours walking over elephant tracks, hopping on stepping stones across the river, and climbing up steep banks. Oh, it's quite tiring. And sometimes I like to take a rest underneath the marula tree. It is so calm and peaceful up here, and I can watch the blazing orange sun creep above the treetops. But it can also be quite dangerous. There are lots of places where I might slip and fall down into the rubbish. But it's worth it to get to school. Once at school, I start my lessons. My favourite lesson is science, because I really like finding out how things work, like cars, and light bulbs, and things. Oh, oh, pick me. I know the answer. I know. Um, uh, uh, kilowatts per hour. Yes. I also like finding out about all the different countries in the world. There are so many that I've never been to. And when I'm older, I shall build myself an aeroplane and go and visit them all. Oh, it ruins it when I have to leave school to go and work on the rubbish dump. It's my job to sift through all the rubbish to find the little pieces of uh, metal and pieces of plastic. And in the middle of the rubbish dump, there's a huge pile of rubbish and I like to climb it all the way to the top. <laughs> From the top, I can see for miles around. I can see where the rubbish ends and the city begins. And at night, I watch the moon as it rises up to smile at me. Each night, I think it's getting bigger and brighter. And tonight, it is so big, I can almost touch it. Oh. I'm sorry you don't have the moon, Arthur, but maybe it thinks you're big enough and bright enough without it. Love from Ammo. Big enough? Bright enough? Perhaps once, long ago. But not now, Arthur thought. Now I'm old and I'm slow. Yes, the world's have got bigger. But why has he got so small? Look at Amma. She was tiny but wasn't scared of it all. Well, no wonder the moon hadn't bothered to stay. But why would it care about Arthur's dull day? No more, Arthur thought. I'm not through with life yet. I won't sit and remember, and I won't stay to forget. Empty suitcase. Empty rucksack. Empty life to be filled. And with adventures waiting, he felt his courage build. But facing your fears requires something more. When zombies, monsters, and a big bad mouse wait outside your door. <laughs> We must tell him to go. What should we say to him? I don't know. What can we tell him? What does he need to hear? How can we help Arthur face his fears? The world will be nice to you. The world will be kind to you. The world will be kind to yes. you, Arthur. What else? Be brave. Be brave. Be brave. Be brave, be brave Arthur. Arthur. Be, be brave. brave. Come on, Can't everyone. Be brave, be brave, Arthur. Be brave. Be brave. Be brave. Be, be brave. brave. Be brave. Be brave. Be brave. <gasps> Where will we go? To the 
and the lady. And her heath. Or west. Board a ship. Or a plane. But what if he comes back like he never departed? It doesn't matter. Because the point is, he started. He didn't look back. And so, he didn't see the moon rising above him. Right shining. And free.